Hi, I'm Professor Clements, and today we're going to talk about a concept called concentration cells. And I'm going to assume you have already figured out things about galvanic cells and how to calculate cell potentials and things like that, so this really isn't a tutorial for that. It assumes that knowledge. But what is a concentration cell? Well, it turns out a concentration cell is a kind of a funny thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves a beaker, and we're going to have a beaker on the left here, we're going to fill it with some solution. And in the solution is going to be some iron 2 plus. Now, in addition, we're going to put an iron electrode in here. So that's a solid iron electrode that we have on the left. And then on the right, in a different color here, we are going to take and do a very similar thing. We're going to take a beaker. We're going to put some, <coughs> excuse me, some, uh, well, a funny thing it did, some solution in it and some iron 2 plus. And we're also going to put an iron solid electrode in there. Now, of course, we're going to do the things we always do for galvanic cells. We are going to connect them by our salt bridge. And we're also going to connect them by a wire between these iron electrodes. Now. If this were a voltaic cell or a galvanic cell, we'd expect electrons to start transferring from one side to the other and going from there to there. But, but when you look here, we've got the same thing on the left as we do on the right. So there's really nothing driving these electrons one way or the other. They don't really want to go to the left solution. They don't really want to go to the right solution because it's the same on either side. In fact, if you go ahead and you look up the standard reduction potential for iron go 2 plus going to iron solid, you find out that the standard reduction potential is negative 0.45 volts. So if we wanted to try to calculate the cell potential here, right, it's going to be the cathode minus the anode. Now, of course, we don't really have a cathode or an anode here because nothing's happening. So it really doesn't matter which side we pick. It's minus 0.45 volts minus a minus 0.45 volts or a big whopping zero volts. And so what we find is that there's not much of a cell potential going on because, um, excuse me, I'm trying to see if I can fix the lack of screen sharing there. No, no, it's not going to let me do it. No. For some reason, my screen sharing's been turning off lately. OK, no screen sharing for me. OK, so we get a whopping 0 volts there. And well, that's not very exciting. So what we're going to do, remember that when we have 0 volts, we have everything at standard conditions. So we have one molar on the left. We have one molar concentration of iron 2 plus on the right. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that a little bit. So instead of having one molar on the left, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that down to 0 0.050 molar. So I've lowered the concentration of iron 2 plus on the left. I've kept it same on the right. So it's still one molar on the right. What's that going to do? Well, it might not be immediately obvious to you what it's going to do. But we also are familiar with Le Chatelier's principle. And what does Le Chatelier's principle say? It says when you take a system at equilibrium, and the system was at equilibrium, it was just sitting there doing nothing and you put a stress to it, it's going to try to undo that stress. And notice that the stress I did is I reduced the concentration of iron 2 plus on that side, which means that the system is going to respond by trying to increase the concentration of iron 2 plus on that side. What does that look like? Well, that looks like on the red side, we are going to have solid iron. And I'm going to call that the left. I'm also doing it in red. And it's going to try to convert to Fe2 plus aqueous on the left, because we're going to try to undo that thing we just did. Well, in order for this guy to oxidize, that means somebody's got to reduce. And what we're going to find is that the orange side is going to reduce to allow the other side to oxidize. And so we're going to find <coughs> that on the left, we're going to take solid iron. We're going to convert it to iron 2 plus. On the right, we're going to take iron 2 plus 
then convert it to solid iron. So on the left, iron 2 plus concentration will increase over time. On the right, iron 2 plus concentration will decrease over time. Now, under standard conditions, again, this was a zero volt cell, but we do not have standard conditions anymore. We've changed one of the concentrations. And when we change concentrations, what do we do? We use the Nernst equation, which says the following, that E cell, not at standard conditions, I didn't put the little zero up there, is equal to the cell potential at standard conditions, so we've got the zero up there, minus its RT over NF, but at standard conditions, it is 0.0592 over N log base 10 of Q. Now remember, Q just has the form of the equilibrium constant and its products over reactants raised to their powers. In this case, it's fairly simple. We just include the aqueous species. In fact, I'll even do that in their colors. The Fe2 plus aqueous, that's on our left. And we're going to divide by the concentration of Fe2 plus aqueous on the right. Because when you look at our balanced reaction, that is a reactant. And so we're going to do that. Now, we didn't change the concentration on the right. We still have one molar. The concentration on the left, we changed to 0 0.050. Remember, I'm not writing units here because Q, everything's divided by the reference unit. 0 0.050 is equal to Q. So now we can plug that into the Nernst equation. We find that the cell potential is the standard cell potential, which we calculated as 0 volts minus 0 0.0592 over N. What's N going to be in this case? I'm going to scroll back up. Well, if you look, we've got iron. Let's see. If we look, we've got iron here changing into iron 2 plus. That is a transfer of two electrons. And if we're transferring two electrons, oops, we're going to put a 2 down there in our equation. So it's times the log base 10 of Q, which we already calculated was 0 0.050. If you plug that in your calculator, you get 0 volts minus, minus 0 0.0385 volts which gives you a positive 0.039 volts. Right? And that's what it looks like, 0.039 volts. And what we find is that this concentration cell, when we changed the concentration on one side, started to run because there was a difference in concentrations. Nature likes to balance things out when possible. And so this difference in concentration caused the cell to actually run. And we made a very small potential difference, 0.0. .0 Three nine volts in this case is the voltage of our concentration cell. So I hope that helped you understand concentration cells a little bit, and uh, good luck with solving whatever problem you're trying to solve. Bye bye.